Good morning, Mom Petit, and welcome back to my channel. I never know if it really shows up on camera, especially because obviously the light doesn't come directly into this room, but we have got another beautiful, bright, sunny day, and you know that that just puts me in the best mood. I love sitting here, especially when I'm getting ready and I can just look out the windows and see the blue skies and the sunshine. It makes me so, so happy, but I'm not going to lie to you. We have another Back to the Future vlog for today's video. I don't really know how this keeps happening. Well, I do know how this keeps happening because obviously in the last video, it was to do with the event that obviously I went to before my birthday that I wanted to include not in my birthday. And this week it's because I actually went on a little day trip yesterday and I kind of realized as I was editing up that footage, I didn't really intro the video. I didn't really explain what was going on, what I was doing that. I kind of just jumped straight into it. So I thought I would do a bit of a bit of a back to the future so that I can explain today what we're doing and what is happening and then you can watch yesterday's footage because yesterday I actually went to visit one of my favourite National Trust properties here in Hampshire, Mottisfant House and Gardens. If you don't know what a National Trust is, it's basically a thing we've got here in the UK which I think is quite unique to the UK. I don't know any other countries that do it but correct me if I'm wrong but it's basically a membership that you can get where this huge kind of umbrella company owns these properties but often they own them in kind of collaboration with the families or they own them in like collaboration with like the person that owned the house before. So a lot of the time people will still like live in their properties but obviously they're open to the public and open to people with a National Trust membership. So I have a National Trust membership which I would say you only need to go to it can be the same property or different properties like three or four times and you've made the membership worth it like three or four times within a year and there are so many around the uk my favorite one which is close by us is modest house and gardens i must admit actually being down here in hampshire i feel like we don't have the most amount of national trust properties like i feel like if you live up north you are spoiled for choice there's one literally a stone's throw away from wherever you are whereas down south we don't have quite as many but it's really nice especially if you're like going to visit a new place like let's say you're doing a weekend staycation in the Cotswolds there's definitely a few like maybe three or four national trust properties you can go and visit and then if you've got the membership you don't have to pay for like your entry you don't have to pay into the house like you can just use your membership to get in pay for your parking and all of that jazz so it's such a good thing to have I would definitely recommend having one and also I still just about qualify for the young person membership which I don't know when that runs out I'm hoping I'm hoping it's until my 30s Alex is turning 30 next year and I keep teasing him that he's not going to get young person memberships anymore because he's a little bit older than me but um yeah I still have a young person membership which means it's even cheaper than like the normal membership but it's so so good like honestly it's such a great thing to have in fact actually this arrived the other day the little National Trust magazine it's so funny how much I've changed over the years like this is 26 this is my reading of choice it used to be Vogue it used to be Elle. In fact, who remembers Glamour magazine? I used to love Glamour magazine. And now I read my National Trust magazine. But I really love this because it just gives you like some things that are happening, going on. Like I believe we've got literally like monthly um, kind of situations. Yeah, August, September. So like a monthly calendar. The heritage days between the 16th and the 6th and the 15th of September. Arts and crafts at the Winchester Park in Gloucestershire. Charleston House in Oxfordshire. Got so many different events and also i love this one summer walks so literally a recommendation of walks that you can do in the summer no matter where you are in the uk so we've got here devon we've got east sussex we've got cumbria honestly so many amazing walks these just look absolutely gorgeous so i've been very much enjoying reading that and obviously it is rose season at the moment so that was my main intention for going to martison now martison used to be a what's the correct term for it a home owned by monks. It's not a nunnery, because that's for nuns, and it's not a monkery. <laughs> Can't remember the official name, but it was a home owned by monks, and it was bought out by, like, you know, a family, and so it's a beautiful and, like, really, really well-kept home. So you've got the house there as well, but also the grounds are just absolutely gorgeous. A lot of my Instagram photos have actually been taken at Mottisman, and I always love doing Instagram shoots at Mottisman because people are just so friendly. It's always filled with lovely elderly couples that walk past me and go, take lovely isn't that such a pretty dress and I'm like thanks it is actually <laughs> so I absolutely love it but one of my favorite things that they have at Montessori which they are renowned for is their walled gardens they've got a kitchen garden and a walled flower garden with I'm pretty sure some of the UK's like most awarded roses I believe don't quote me on that but I know that they are renowned 
for their roses that they have in their ward garden. So seeing as though it is June, it is rose season. And we thought we would go and visit and see all the beautiful roses, see the beautiful gardens and just have a lovely wander around. So it was the loveliest day yesterday, which I will let you watch in a minute. But before I do, I do actually have a little unboxing to do with you guys that I wanted to show you. So I've been very, very kindly sent over some bits from Vive. Now Vive is Jamie Genevieve's brand. She created a makeup line and she is absolutely killing it. And I do feel like the pieces that she releases are so like curated, they're so well thought through. And they are like every, especially in summer, every makeup girlie's dream. And I've tried a couple of products from Vive in the past and everything that I've tried, I have absolutely adored. So I have a couple of bits here that I wanted to show you that the team are very, very kindly sent over starting with the lip dues now i do feel like lip oils are just the product of the summer and i absolutely love them because i personally don't like wearing lipstick where you can really feel it on your lips i don't like wearing something drying i hate it when you get to the end of the day and you know when you see a line on your lip where it's kind of like this is so gross but it's like crusted I'm not about that life. So I feel like everything that I've been adding into my makeup routine at the moment have been oil. So I'm very, very excited to try Jemmy, 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 <laughs> Jemmy, Genevieve's oils, the Vive lip oils, because I've seen so many people raving about them. So we've got two shades here. The first shade is Rosa, which I feel like could not be any more perfect considering that we went to go and see the roses yesterday. And oh my gosh. <gasps> that is beautiful. Look at that packaging. Oh, I always love it when you can see yourself. Hello. <laughs> Look at that packaging and that color. It's just absolutely stunning. Oh, I'm gonna need to try this because I think this is just going to be right up my street. I do already have a bit of lip oil on at the moment. But I feel like this is just gonna pair so beautifully with it. Oh my gosh, it tastes and smells amazing too. I can't work out what that is, but it's very sweet. Oh, that is such a lovely shade. Do you know what? That's actually quite a like bridal shade. Please excuse the fact that I've got a little bit of a cracked lip here at the side, but oh my gosh, that is absolutely stunning. Okay, I think this might just be my new favorite lip product, the Vibe Lip Dew in Rosa. Absolutely obsessed, I need to try the other one now. We also have Cherub, which I'm guessing is gonna be a bit more like ready in tone, which I do quite like ready lip oils, because I feel like they add a little pop of color without it being like too much. Oh wow, look at that. That's actually not what I was expecting. It's a bit more pinky in tone, but that I think is going to be such a beautiful colour for summer. So I'm doing the typical beauty YouTuber thing of putting my hand behind because it's like the only way for you to actually see the product for it to focus. But look at that colourway. It's like a really beautiful pinky red. That is absolutely stunning. Oh, I'm definitely going to have to add that into my routine as well. I cannot wait to try that. We then also have one of their Sunset Flush Balms. Now, I've tried one in the past and I found that it wasn't quite bright enough. Like, I do find for me with a blush, I really like like a pinky, quite a bright blush. I'm excited to see what colorway we have here. This is Piazza. And I think this might just be the perfect one to add into my routine because I do love a cream blush at the moment. It's kind of all I'm reaching for. I've not really been reaching for any powders recently with regards to my bronzers, my kind of like contouring, as well as my blush. I just feel like, especially in the summer, number one, it's so easy to apply. You can use your fingers. I never used to be a finger girl whenever it came to makeup. But recently, I've really become the kind of person that just loves applying things on my fingers because I feel like it just blends into your skin so much better. It just like melts into your makeup and then it just looks so much more natural. So let's give this a little try because I think this could be another gorgeous color. I love how it looks. So Piazza in the Sunset Blush Balm. And I do love the consistency of these. Ooh, that is quite dark actually. Can you see that? I was kind of expecting it to be the same color as the packaging. Can you see that? Look at that. That is actually quite a dark shade. So I think a little bit is just going to go quite a long way. But I do love, I just love doing like right in the corner of my cheekbone. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. <gasps> that is actually beautiful. It's unlike anything I've ever tried. That's giving me like a really kind of sun's kissed glow. Oh my word. I'm obsessed. I never would have gone for a color like this, but this is literally making me look like I've just been sun kissed. Like, you know, when you've been lying out in the sun on holiday and you come home, and you just have that like glow to your skin. It's not even like a rosy glow. It's literally like a sun kissed glow. Oh my goodness me, I am in love. And lastly, we have a new mascara to try. Now, I have been giving my lashes a little bit of a break from LVL. I like getting LVL done, but one thing that my lash lady has said to me is that you do need to give yourself a little bit of time in between appointments. Otherwise, it just kind of doesn't sit as well. It doesn't like 
fit to your lashes quite as well so i've been really looking into some lovely like comfortable mascaras to wear so i'm really excited to try this this is the modern mascara in midnight black and i've not really heard much about the beef mascara so i'm excited to give it a go that packaging is just beautiful as well it feels so weighty and i'm hoping it's like more of a plastic applicator yeah that is absolutely beautiful look at that I always find the applicators that have like a bit of a dip in them just last so much better and like really really cling to my lashes without making them clumpy. I hate a clumpy mascara that just looks like you've got like this big massive ball of mascara goop on there so I'm really really excited to give that a try. So some lovely products sent over from Vive which I'm so so excited to add into my routine. I mean this lip oil I'm loving how it feels. It literally feels like I've just put a load of like hyaluronic acid on my lip, like something so moisturizing and chewy that I almost forget that it actually like has a color and actually makes me look like I've got the most beautiful shade on my lips. So this is definitely one you can expect to see on my lips a lot more this summer. Goodness me, can you see that sunshine coming through? Oh, it just makes me so, so happy. But I wanted to show you those pieces before we jump into the rest of the video. So as I said, a lovely day out in Mottisfant here in Hampshire. It's definitely one that I would add to your Hampshire bucket list if you are coming down to visit. So we'll jump over onto that video with a real Back to the Future vlog today, yesterday, and then tomorrow. But hope you enjoy. <laughs> just arrived at Mottisfant now and I'm not gonna lie I've literally made a beeline my favorite area at Mottisfant the walled gardens are just absolutely stunning for me this is just complete garden goals not only do we have the beautiful florals which I cannot wait to go and see but I couldn't help myself I just first had to come into the kitchen walled garden here at Mottisfant there's a little cafe in the corner which I think is so so lovely you can sit in the kitchen garden and just soak up the atmosphere but I always love seeing like what they're growing what they're harvesting because for me this is just the epitome of of kitchen garden goals. I mean, if I could create something half as beautiful as this, I would be such a happy bunny. I mean, the kitchen garden itself is literally surrounded by the most beautiful wall, which they always make the most of growing stunning flowers up. These look like salvia to me, which I absolutely adore. I love salvia. We've got some beautiful pink salvia. We've also got some beautiful purple salvia over there and all around the walls are just covered with the most stunning roses, which actually look like they're going over already. I can't believe that. Oh my goodness. But wow, these are just the fluffiest, most beautiful pink roses. And look at these foxgloves. Oh my goodness me. This, I hope, to one day grow in my garden. I hope mine get nearly as tall as this. They are honestly like, I can't even explain to you. They're like over the height of me. I mean, I know that's not hard. I'm only five foot, but they are so unbelievably tall. And we also have the most amazing lavender that it looks like it is just about to bloom lining the walled garden. Oh my goodness. I love that they've labeled everything. So you know exactly what is growing in the kitchen garden. So we have some onions growing here. And then we also have some bright light chard, which look like they're doing really, really well. I reckon and they're going to shoot really, really quickly. And then what's growing up? This amazing climber runner beans. Oh my goodness, look at the runner beans. I bet they're gonna grow so, so tall this summer. Look at the beautiful structures that they have growing as well. The stunning roses. Oh my word, that is honestly just pergola goals. And I don't know what's actually growing on the side, but they usually do some veggies growing up here. I think they often have some like marrows. I don't see any labels here, but look at the size of it. It's just absolutely incredible. And these roses are doing it so, so well as well. We have some beautiful like peachy colored roses. And then we have some more kind of fuchsia colors, which I always love a naturally grown pergola. Fun fact, actually, if ever you're looking for some beautiful natural shade, especially in the summer here in the UK, apparently natural shade is like two times cooler than like faux shades. If you were to do a pergola, I wouldn't suggest doing like a big um, like blockade or even just like a little sheet going over the top. Like you're so much better off growing something, whether that's with steel 
Wisteria Roses Honeysuckle. It's so much cooler underneath this shade than it would be underneath a natural shade. And I just think that's such an amazing fact. I've also just noticed the way that they've wrapped the roses going up this column. I mean, how incredible is that? And then these beds are always my favourites. They just come alive in the summer. What do we have here? We have some pumpkins, which look how tiny they always start out. It always just amazes me how small things are when they begin and then how much space they take up. I think we may also have, if I recognise these correctly, some sweet peas growing in the middle, which is so exciting. And I know a lot of people find salad quite boring in a kitchen garden, but I have to say it's my favourite. Do you know what makes me actually quite happy is seeing that even Mottisfant has been ravaged by snails. It's not just my garden that has been struggling, but we have some rocket here. We also have some oak leaf lettuce, which is always one of my favourites. Curly leaf lettuce and also coriander. I just love seeing the salads growing because they always, again, they grow so big. They take over. It's just absolutely amazing to see. And this bed is looking very, very healthy. So again, we've got some onions growing in the middle and we've also got some shallots growing on the edge, which is absolutely incredible. I love seeing like the companion planting and how it can actually like really benefit your veg beds. Honestly, I feel like I just take away so many notes. My notes app is filled whenever I come away from Mottisfant. Another beautiful structure over on this side. And then this looks to me like we have some beans growing up. Are these runner beans potentially? They look like they're doing really, really well. I reckon they're gonna grow literally up the entirety of this structure by the end of summer. And this is exactly what I love to see in a kitchen garden, like really utilizing structures and obviously like utilizing the rhubarb forces. Although I think this is rhubarb growing in front of it. I can't tell you how big this is. It's absolutely huge. So I'm guessing they also have some rhubarb growing in the forces here, paired alongside the most beautiful climbing rose i mean i can't even begin to tell you how big this is it's the most beautiful like peachy color but oh, again taking so much inspiration i love the way that the rhubarb forces just stick out and just give that like beautiful bit of structure and that terracotta color mixed in with the green i love it so so much I love seeing the way that they're able to kind of like mix in the kitchen garden with the more kind of like natural floral garden. I think it's so, so beautiful. And of course, we cannot forget about the car frame. <gasps> Let's have a look at what they're growing. I don't think we're able to get too close, but it looks like most of the seedlings are growing here in here. But obviously it's warm enough to have the cold frame open now. And this is just getting me so, so excited and so inspired. Okay, we're heading in to the Rose Gardens. I'm so excited to see what they are growing in here. Oh my goodness, <gasps> look at those foxgloves. Oh my goodness me, well this is giving me serious cottage garden inspo. The foxgloves growing alongside these beautiful roses, which these ones seem to be yet to bloom. I think those may be cosmos over there. I really am learning all of my plants. So you guys are always more than welcome to comment or correct me or let me know what things are down below in the comments because I love learning from you guys and I feel like you always are just absolute abundance of knowledge like i love hearing what you guys know about gardening another stunning climbing rose on that wall look at how beautiful that is look at these peonies oh my goodness me the fluffiest most cotton candy peonies i think i've ever seen in my life oh my goodness me this tree has been taken over he's clearly been bollarded which if you watch escape to the chateau we know all about bollarding but it has been taken over by this climbing clematis and these teacup roses look at them oh wow it's just an abundance of florals wrapped around this tree oh my goodness the foxgloves this year are honestly just loving life again giving me serious cottage garden inspiration the beautiful white foxgloves paired alongside the climbing roses and we've also got some irises down here which is stunning shade of purple oh my wow this is just beautiful Oh my goodness, the foxgloves this year are just doing so, so well. They must just be loving the climate that we've had this year. And again, it's just giving me serious country cottage inspiration. We've got the beautiful, I think these may be cosmos. Oh no, they're a type of rose. I've just spotted the sign there. A Fru Dragma Hastrup rose, which are so beautiful. And again, alongside the climbing rose on the wall. Oh, it is just absolutely stunning. Oh my goodness, I think these might be thistles. <gasps> They look like they're about to bloom so, so soon. How stunning are they? Yeah. 
I honestly don't think you understand how big these peonies are. Let me put my hand next to it so you can see the size. Like it's literally the size of my hand. They are just so full. I've got a couple that are just about ready to bloom as well, which I think is just gonna be equally as stunning. And the most beautiful shade of fuchsia pink peonies. It's a little, little bumblebee having a little snack on these. I always love it when you can see ones that are yet to bloom as well because it just means that there is more coming. It's not as beautiful as it could be. I don't know what these are behind it, but I love these lollipop ones as well. They're stunning. I think this might just be the biggest allium I've ever seen in my life. <gasps> wow, look at the size of it. He's having a nice snack, little bumblebee on there as well. I always love seeing the pollinators getting a good old little nibble away at the pollen, but oh my gosh, it's just huge. Look at the little path leading through the most beautiful foliage up to a gorgeous, gorgeous pergola. I always love a bit of structure. I keep trying to persuade Alex that we need something like this in our garden. I think it would just look absolutely incredible at the end of the garden where the foundation is. But he's got big plants over there, so apparently I'm not allowed to do anything like this yet. But I think these might be roses growing up. Are they roses? I have no idea. <gasps> but they're beautiful nonetheless. And there's a hard at work clearing away some of the foliage as well. And I just think they need such a huge round of applause because honestly, the gardens here at Mottisfant are my absolute favorite. They are so, so stunning. So we've just left at Mottisfant now after honestly just the loveliest day, having a little wander around and explore. The gardens are just beautiful. The walled gardens honestly have me gushing. I'm sorry, I feel like this vlog is basically just 10 minutes of me gushing over plants, flowers, roses and everything else in between but it's just absolutely beautiful on such a lovely day just to have a lovely wonder have a little bit of a coffee walk around the grounds they're beautiful grounds at Mottisfant as well like not just the walled gardens but around the house there are stunning grounds and even like inside the house is so great to go in and visit if you do have like a national trust membership or if you do get tickets to go inside at the house I would definitely recommend it because it's just absolutely beautiful seeing like all of the rooms they've really done a good job at maintaining it and there's just one room and one thing I would say I'm so that person whenever I go in into like national trusts or if ever I go into like manor houses because I'm well aware that the people that are there are actually volunteers so they choose to spend their time like, like they're not being paid they're not being like compensated for their time they are volunteers and they are always absolute fountains of knowledge that's the word I was the phrase I was trying to say about you guys for you guys are fountains of knowledge when it comes to gardens and I feel like the people at national trust properties are always fountains of knowledge actually I would definitely recommend chatting to the gardeners as well because nine out of ten times they are more than happy to chat to you about what they're doing what they're growing what they're kind of maintaining what they've got in the gardens they love it and the lovely volunteers in the national trust like in the houses always know so much about the houses as well and i always feel like i learn so much from them like i know in mottisfant there's this amazing room where there's this like smoke effect wallpaper and you can only see it in the mirror and it's so clever and that was done like 1800s or something like that it's absolutely insane so i love learning like i just absolutely adore learning i think that's why i love listening to like podcasts and like reading non-fiction books rather than fiction books like i just absolutely love it but i've actually come into romsey now because we wanted to have a little wander through the village maybe a coffee at josie's if we are feeling extra naughty and a little slice of cake but it's just been the loveliest loveliest day so lovely having a wander around Mottison. it's honestly just one of my favorite places to go and explore as you can tell I'm rather passionate about National Trust properties but I just absolutely adore how much like volunteer work is involved and I just think it's so so special and having them here in the UK is just absolutely amazing so no matter where in the UK you are I always think there's a beautiful National Trust to go and explore and just spend the loveliest day out at but as I said we've come into Romsey now for a little wander through the village a little coffee and cake at Josie's which is just always my absolute fave. back home from Romsey now and I think it is safe to say that today has just been the dreamiest day like one of my favorite kinds of days beautiful walk around the National Trust at Mottison it's just my favorite being able to explore the walled garden the kitchen garden the flower garden the grounds of Mottison are always beautiful and then an afternoon in Romsey a lovely little walk through the village finished with a coffee and cake at Josie's I went for the chai iced vanilla latte and oh my goodness me I'm officially a convert officially a convert you guys are right it is delicious and I feel like it's even better when you get it at a coffee shop because I don't know what they put over the top I don't know if it was just like the chai kind of like powder or whether it was a bit of cinnamon sprinkled on top but oh my goodness me 
chef's kiss absolute chef's kiss it was delicious but i popped by waitrose on the way home because i wanted to pick up a top up of my favorite and scandalously they've changed the packaging i'm not gonna lie, it took me ages to find them because i was looking for the old packaging and like the old kind of visuals of how they looked and they have completely changed them and i kind of want to make myself a drink of this this evening i think i'm gonna make myself this sit outside in the garden and just soak up the evening sunshine i might even do some emails outside because i feel like that's one of the best things to do in summer laptop time outside like admin emails all those boring things are always better when you get to do them out in the garden but this is the robinson's fruit cordials oh my goodness me they are game changing i absolutely love them i picked up two because it was two four five pounds i believe which um was a bit of a deal that they had going on they aren't like the cheapest in the world but oh my god they are absolutely amazing and i feel like you can utilize these a lot for different kind of like drinks especially in the summer these are my favorite thing to utilize for my mocktails i love doing my mocktails whenever i'm hosting you know how much we adore our hosting especially in summer and i always feel like it's really lovely to have like a lovely refreshing drink that's not just something that's boring like a diet coke or something like that i really try not to have as many of those kind of like fizzy like really chemically drinks in like diet coke i know is so not good for you like it kills so much of your stomach bacteria and so i'd much rather have something that's maybe a little bit fizzy or a little bit kind of like zesty or like refreshing for guests to have because of course being here in the new forest it requires a lot of driving like we live kind of far away from each other so most of the time when we have guests over there's at least one person who's driven so i always like to do like a non-alcoholic version and also they just don't feel like drinking i'm never that host that's like gonna pressure anyone into having like a rosé or anything like that so i always like to accommodate and have things ready for them so this is the lime and mint flavor this is my absolute favorite i also love the elderflower flavor that's a really nice one and they do a raspberry raspberry and rhubarb i think it is which is delicious and i find that you can utilize them in different ways because they're a cordial it's basically just kind of like a squash type thing but it's like a little bit stronger so if you just want something really simple just add some water and you can literally have it as a nice and refreshing drink but if you want to make it a little bit more fun a little bit more exciting like a mocktail cocktail type thing i do definitely think that you could add alcohol with this as well and create like a proper cocktail but for me i like to do either like a soda water or a lemonade with it i always utilize my herbs behind me it's my favorite thing about having a herb kitchen is that you can utilize your own homegrown projects so i always do a little bit of mint chopped up if you've got any like frozen lemons another thing i love to do a little bit of a hosting tip is to cut up lemon slices and freeze them because number one they obviously act like ice in the water but number two they are great when it comes to garnishing and they're also great at adding a little bit more flavor so frozen lemons frozen limes or obviously if you're going with one of the different flavors i love to do like frozen strawberries frozen raspberries frozen blueberries are also really really nice to do you could even add them like in an ice cube i think it's really really cool add a lot of ice as i said a little bit of lemonade or like a bit of fizz is such a lovely way to do a mocktail but i think i'm just gonna have this with a little bit of water a lot of ice because i want something nice and cooling and refreshing and just enjoy a lovely drink of this outside and that is just what the doctor ordered just a perfectly refreshing lovely drink it's a little bit nicer than just like a glass of water a little bit more flavored and refreshing i like to add a lot of ice to it a little garnish of my homegrown mint it also helps just kind of infuse a little bit more of that minty flavor in so you can really mix it in to your little kind of mocktail into your drink and just really get that like mint coming through add a little straw and enjoy outside it honestly it's just the perfect summery drink to make myself so i'm gonna head outside and enjoy good morning mom but here we in focus i feel like the camera lens may need a little bit of a clean let's give you a little wipe there because i feel like i've been taking you out and about a little bit too much lately but look this beautiful weather that we have got today it's another bright and sunny day it's quite a blusterous day today i'm not gonna lie to you you know when you look outside and the trees are like bending sideways in the wind and it means the cloud coverage it's a beautiful blue sky day but you know i always call them pixar clouds where they're like these really little like white fluffy clouds that just kind of bob along and it does mean we get a little bit of inconsistency with regards to the sunshine with regards to the clouds so i'm sorry if the lighting changes a lot but let's pop you here and we can have a little bit of a catch-up because it's actually a couple of days since i last spoke to you and i'm not gonna lie we have had the most productive weekend i think we've ever had since moving into this house other than like the actual moving weekends where literally 7 a.m till 10 p.m <laughs> every single day we were unpacking boxes we were unpacking clothes bags organizing rooms and like getting moved in other than that i would say that this has probably been the most productive weekend that we have had you know those kinds of weekends where you set yourself a list and everything one by one just keeps getting ticked off and you just feel so accomplished afterwards because some of the jobs are the kind of jobs that you've been putting off for a really long time like weeding <sighs> 
the wild garlic in this garden oh my goodness me if you're new here and you don't know basically when we first moved into this house we had what we thought was like a bed of snowdrops and i was quite confused because i was like i swear snowdrops don't self-seed this much like i don't think this is deliberate like I'm, i was really confused as to what they are we basically found out that they're wild garlic which is lovely if you live in the countryside, you know, you see them out and about in the forest. It's beautiful. In the new forest, there's a lot of beds that are covered in wild garlic, and I love it. Having it in your own garden, however, is not fun because it is so invasive. So it takes over other plants. Like, it literally wraps itself around the roots and the bulbs. I dug up at least two, three hundred more bulbs, more wild garlic bulbs that would have obviously, like, come back in the summer if I hadn't found them. And, oh, my gosh, it was back-breaking work. Like, so difficult because you've literally got to, like, sift the soil, try and get the bulbs out. And I definitely don't think we put all of them. So many of you said be careful make sure you get 100 percent of them and there's always going to be some that slip through the cracks and i think i'm just gonna to have to be so on it with regards to not letting it take over the garden again because as beautiful as it looked in like early springtime it's just so invasive and it's just not worth like the damage that it does to the other plants we did loads of weeding and we've just been doing a bit of like a summer house reset i think is the best way to describe it because it is definitely leaning towards summertime now here in the uk i know june is still technically spring according to like the yearly calendar for me i always kind of see june as summer because june is like the first month that we're really like hosting everyone around it's usually the first month you get really warm weather here in the uk and i absolutely love being able to host the family like after hosting for my birthday i've got the bug and we just wanted to get the house kind of sorted because i feel like in summertime you just want to almost like open everything up and like get the house ready for summer hosting for summer parties you just want it to feel really like light and airy and one thing i would definitely say about this house this is the benefit of having an old house it's very cool so it's so lovely when the weather is like 30 degrees i can't wait to live in this house this summer because our old house as much as we loved those bifold doors oh my goodness me that kitchen was a greenhouse in the summertime and when it hit like 30 35 degrees we were absolutely dying. So this house is a lot cooler. Obviously, it's like more cottage vibes. There's less like big windows and things like that. So I feel like this is going to be such a lovely place to live in summertime. And obviously, we've got the garden, which we've been doing so much gardening this weekend. It makes me so, so happy. I also popped to the garden center. Let me show you something I picked up. Oh my gosh, look how cute this is. This is a little jug for strawberries and cream. There's a couple of reasons why I picked this up. Number one, because, oh my gosh, I'm back on the strawberries and cream hype after my birthday weekend. The amazing strawberries and cream that we had at the pig was just incredible. And it's kind of inspired me to grow my own strawberries. So I have been doing a little bit of work this weekend on the kitchen garden. I do have some updates to show you. After the amazing tour of the kitchen garden at Mottisman, I have just been so, so inspired with regards to like what I want to grow, what I want to plant, and what I want to like utilize in my own kitchen garden. Because one thing that I would say when it comes to gardening is that some people can be so funny about like what you're growing. And like, the one thing I would say is just grow what makes you happy, grow what you eat, grow what you love. Like there's certain things that I feel like would be so fun to grow like pumpkins. I don't really eat pumpkins so it's not really worth my time it's not really worth the space whereas salad love a salad eat it all the time strawberries love strawberries eat them all the time and i just thought this would be such a cute little thing to bring out you know when you've got like guests over the sun is coming out which is making me very very happy and with your little strawberries and cream with your homegrown strawberries and cream how amazing would that be alex literally turned around and went we just need to get a little pet cow now and then you can make your own cream and i'm like don't tempt me can you imagine my own little highland kale in the garden <laughs> that would literally be the dream but i picked this up from the garden center and let me show you the updates that have been happening in the kitchen garden because it's rather exciting i'm not going to lie to you i feel like we're officially underway with like the kitchen garden project well hopefully you can hear me over the wind outside because as i said it is quite a blustery day but as you can see there have been a lot of updates happening in the kitchen garden and i am so so excited about it so as you can see we have a cold frame full of soil she has been made a foundation of she has been bedded in she is ready for the veggies and i could not be a happier what i'm going to do when i do get the veggies is i'm going to mix in some like compost and topsoil on the top so that we just basically filled it with soil ready for the kind of like mulching ready for the top layer and ready for the veggies to go 
in. Oh my goodness me, I cannot wait to get planting in here. I feel like you can't quite gauge like the size of this, especially compared to the size of my old veggie truck, which as you know, I absolutely adored and it was so great for learning how to grow vegetables because it was my first time growing my own produce. Like I'd never done anything like that before last summer. And I absolutely loved it, but this is about double the size of the veggie truck that I had at our old house. So I'm gonna be able to grow double the amount of veggies and I'm so excited. And I feel like last year I took away so many lessons. Like I'm not gonna be doing onions again. Um, it wasn't something that we really utilize enough. Whereas as I said, like salad, something we use all the time. And another thing that we eat all the time that I'm so excited about is my strawberry plant. Now I wasn't actually planning on picking up anything at the garden center in terms of produce because I wanted to get the gold frame, like, you know, the foundation sorted. I wanted to get it filled with soil before we actually like moved on to anything else. But when I saw this little strawberry plant, I could not leave it at the garden center. I could not take it home because it is the cutest little thing I have ever, ever seen. Now, obviously I've not grown this from seed, but it's something that I would say is actually really great if you're a beginner gardener is just to not be afraid of not growing things from seed. I was watching a TikTok the other day and it's really funny how much my TikTok is just filled with gardeners now. And someone did say, if you're a beginner, I would not recommend going from seed. I would not recommend growing indoors because it's actually a lot of work. Don't be afraid just to buy things from the garden center, see how they go, see how like you enjoy them in your garden, see how much you actually utilize them or eat them or love them. And then as the years goes on, you can kind of test yourself a little bit and maybe grow things from seed. Can you hear the wind chimes? I absolutely love it, it's so magical. Um, but yes, I picked up a little strawberry plant from the garden center and I'm so, so excited. I need, feel like I maybe should have put a little bit more soil in just so that it can hang over the edge, but I quite like it in there because it's a little bit more protected and I feel like the birds can't see it as well. I am thinking about getting a cloche because I know people say that strawberry plants are the worst for being eaten by little birds and things like that in the garden so I might have a little look into that but my own little strawberry plant that I've potted up I'm so excited about and as you can see I've been hard at work as well with regards to my little potting table it is filled with herbs already and I could not be happy this is exactly what I wanted from this for it just to be like filled with pots for it to be absolutely brimming with like herbs or veggies or things like that I'm thinking about doing tomatoes which would be amazing so I repotted my mint because it was definitely too big for the pot and I just wanted to give it a little bit of space and I love mint because we use it quite a lot especially in the summer for things like drinks for cocktails mocktails all of that jazz I repotted up the um basil that I had on the windowsill as well because again I feel like the pot was just a bit too small for it and I definitely find that with these things they look like they're doing fine and then it's not until you take them out of the pot and you realize the roots are wrapped around each other because it's just been so squished in so potted up my basil again and it's looking really really happy and then I also have this rosemary which we always love to use whenever we do like roasts or things like um, veggie trays and stuff. I absolutely love it. So the kitchen garden is really coming together now and I cannot wait for the planting to start. I cannot wait to actually get my veggies in the ground, in the cold frame and get growing them. But for now, I'm so, so happy with the progress that we've been making and how it's looking in this little corner. I also have a new update to show you over in this corner that arrived at the weekend that I am so in love with in our little lime wood corner. I literally just cannot stop calling it that, but can you notice a new little addition in the corner there? I could not be happier. I'll leave it linked down below where I got this from. I can't remember the name of the brand off the top of my head, but it's actually the same brand that the um, gorgeous fireplace pieces came from that I'm absolutely in love with the fireplace accessories. And they just have so many cute bits there, like outdoor mirrors. I feel like they're called like a French, homeware styling company or something like that it's like dib dib or dibo i cannot remember but i will leave it linked down below but i've been looking for something like this for so so long to put our garden shoes in because for the time being we've just been like popping them in baskets or just leaving them by the back door and it just always feels like it gets so messy and i do like to have them like really easy access because you know me i just want to jump in and out of the garden but i don't really want to be wearing like our garden shoes around the house or anything like that and i've spoken about these garden shoes before but i absolutely love them they're the town and country garden shoes and they're so comfortable Comfy. I know that they look so dorky, but if you are a true gardener, then you don't mind looking dorky for the sake of comfort. Alex has got his Crocs up there as well. And then it just means when people come around, they can leave their shoes there. You can put welly boots on here. I think this is officially a welly boot holder, but obviously we're going to be using it for our garden shoes. And I love how it looks because you can just pop it by the back door. And then it just means that, you know, you can chuck your shoes on and it looks so much neater and tidy. And actually, I think it looks quite cute with a little like corner setup. I think it's so, so lovely. I'm still wanting to do some updates in here 
here like ad paneling and stuff but that is something that is a project down the line that we will look into at a later date for now all of my energy and all of my effort is going out into the garden but um yeah how cute is this a little addition little welly boot holder to add in i think it's just so handy to pop your shoes on and just keep them a little bit neater and a little bit tidier so i'm absolutely in love with that and is there anything better than doing a full kitchen reset this view always just makes me so so happy and especially in summertime i just always want my kitchen to be lovely and bright and airy and clean i always love having the french doors open the windows open and just letting all of the air in especially because at the weekend alex was actually batch cooking and as much as i love it when he batch cooks it is obviously it requires quite a lot of cleanup so i've just been giving the kitchen a little bit of a scrub down this morning i've also been misting my basil because my goodness me did alex use a lot of it in the batch cooking which is absolutely fine i'm so happy that we can use our own homegrown produce this is what i love about growing whether it's in the garden or in the kitchen i absolutely love it i would definitely say if you're like in a flat or somewhere with no outdoor space just a few herbs in your kitchen can literally make you so so happy but you can see just how much has been like hacked away and chopped back because he was using a lot lot of it in the batch cooking and something I realized I forgot to show you in my birthday haul because it's literally been sitting on my windowsill ever since getting it for my birthday is this adorable little mist I mean how cute is this and one thing I would say that I've learned about basil is that it really likes a lot of sun and it really likes a lot of water it is a thirsty thirsty plant so it really loves sitting here because it literally gets the direct sunlight coming in from the kitchen but it's not too hot here so it really really likes this area and I like to just give it particularly in the evening a good old little spritz with this i mean how adorable is that it's great for your house plants just to give things a little spritz a little mist it's also really good i've heard for like seedlings as i said i'm on gardening tiktok now and apparently this is supposed to be really good when you plant out seedlings and have them in something like a cold frame so that you don't soak them but you just keep them maybe like once or twice a day give them a little spritz and you just keep them nice and like moisturized and hydrated so cute little birthday present I didn't get a chance to show you but I absolutely love it and I just love how lovely and clean and tidy the kitchen is looking oh no <laughs> I've made a mistake I've done that thing where I've sat down when I really really shouldn't have and now I don't want to get up I'm really cozy and really comfy but I did that thing you know when you're like it's just gonna be for five minutes let's just scroll on Instagram just have a little bit of a break and before you know it it's been like half an hour and you're still there and I have some work that I need to crack on with this evening I need to be doing a little bit of work for petite ease styling which I've just been loving doing at the moment I'll leave a little link to it down below if you're looking for more of like a unique kind of bespoke styling service I've got a couple of new clients that I'm onboarding that I'm so excited to create wardrobe of their dreams it's been so so lovely doing it and it's quite nice actually just like get comfy do a little bit of laptop work a bit of admin and I could technically do it from here but I know I'm not going to be as kind of concentrated or like as focused if I do it from here because all I'm going to want to do is stick the tv on behind me and just get cozy and snuggly so I need to get myself upstairs I need to actually get this butt into gear but I just wanted to end off this video because I feel like it's been quite a long time since we've done a three-day vlog no actually that's a lie the last vlog was a three-day vlog as well it's quite fun doing three-day vlogs actually because I just feel like we can kind of spread out our time a little bit more and it's so lovely to show you so many new updates new beauty bits going around the new forest you know how much I adore being able to show you new places to explore and of course the kitchen garden updates i can't wait to start planting and for it to actually become like my little veg garden that we can pick from we can forage from and we can harvest our own vegetables because i'm loving harvesting our own herbs and i remember the joy that it gave me last year so i'm so so excited again for it this summer so i think i'm gonna end this vlog here if you got to the end of the video comment harvest down below in your comment because i always love knowing who gets to the end of my videos and if this isn't perfect timing then i don't know what is because my camera battery has just started flashing to tell me ellie it's time to wrap up and it's time to go so i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you have the loveliest evening and i will see you in my next one bye